Hi, I'm Candy Hemphill Christmas, and for most of my life I have sang gospel music, southern gospel music. I sang with my family, the Hemphills. Uh, I also have a gospel music family, the Happy Goodman family, that were sung gospel also. Then for many years I traveled with Bill and Gloria Gaither, uh, doing their homecoming video series and traveling and doing all their concerts along with the video series, the homecoming videos, and I was very, very blessed to be able to sit in the room and sing gospel music with the gospel music greats, such as Howard and Buster Goodman, which also are my aunt and uncle, but Dottie Rambo and the Cathedral Quartet and all the gospel music greats. It was just a tremendous chapter in my life that has added so much uh, to, to my life and to my career, and I'm very thankful for that. I've just released a new CD called On the Other Side, and I was very blessed to work with producer Rob Tripp. And this is a new CD that is, uh, uh, it tells a story more or less of where I've been for the last several years. I've not recorded an album in almost 10 years. I've taken quite a hiatus from gospel music, but for the last few years, I've had the great honor and privilege to feed homeless people on the streets of Nashville. And this CD, On the Other Side, kind of tells my story. I've picked some of these songs, hand-picked them, because they tell what uh, my life is about now. For uh, a couple of years, I suffered from depression, a very dark, dark place. And uh, I wound up sitting in a dark room for days and weeks on end. And when God brought me through the process of depression. My doctor wanted to hospitalize me. I lost my appetite. I weighed about 100 pounds and I was, I was just extremely depressed. So the doctor wanted to medicate me and hospitalize me. And I said, you know, I think that I, I want to go a different direction. And about that time, there was an old minister that I had met who was doing some work on a friend of mine's home. And he said, you know, I'm roasting hot dogs for uh, homeless people under a bridge here in Nashville and you look like you would benefit from going with me. Would you like to go? And honestly, I was so depressed I could barely put one foot in front of the other. But I said, you know, I think I will. So I said, can you cook? Because I think he thought by looking at me weighing about 100 pounds that I, he was sure I could not cook. So I said, you know, I can cook. I'm a Louisiana girl and I can uh, cook jambalaya in, in any size pot for any size crowd and I would love to go. He said, well, make your jambalaya and meet me under the bridge. I did not know at that time that there are 11,000 homeless people on the streets of Nashville and 4,000 of those are children. My first night under the bridge, something came alive in me. And I have to tell you now, six years later, I have never been depressed a day since. I read a doctor's study by Dr. Stephen G. Post that said that there are endorphins that are released inside of your body that make you so happy. And when you do something good for someone, and I experienced that the first night. There was, a, there was something that came alive in me. I found people who really needed Christ, who really needed a hot meal, and who really needed to see the love of Jesus Christ at a, gra a grassroots level. And so I, I dipped out the jambalaya to the homeless, and I couldn't wait to get back under the bridge the following Tuesday night and the Tuesday night after that. And six years later, we feed about 500 homeless people a week. We have a 20,000 square foot warehouse full of food and clothing and toiletry items. And the homeless ministry, I have to say, has done much more for me than I could ever do for the homeless. So. This new CD, On the Other Side, talks about uh, now that I'm on the other side of depression, on the other side of career seeking and, and applause seeking uh, parts of my life and career, that now that I'm on the other side of that, I really love that. I really feel that uh, my life has meaning and I have found that meaning down on the streets. One in particular, song, uh, the title cut, There is a Blessing on the Other Side, was written by my daughter. She's 21 years old, and that is also our single, On the Other Side. We also have written a book telling stories of all the miracles that we've seen God do under the bridge and in the lives
lives of the homeless and how Jesus Christ has changed their lives and turned them around and made them uh, valuable parts of the community now. Uh, we are uh, on the verge of opening a learning center for the homeless. And so now we're on the other side. There is another song called Orphans of God. And uh, it's a beautiful song. Uh, and it is uh, about how that people feel outcast, maybe from society, or because of our own mistakes, sometimes we're outcast from those that we love and we feel orphaned or abandoned and we feel rejection. And this song plainly states, God has no orphans. You might feel rejected by others, but you will never feel rejected by Jesus Christ. And so I also have a video uh, about this, uh, Orphans of God, and we show you many pictures of the homeless faces down on the streets of Nashville. So I'm very blessed to be able to record the song, uh, the CD on the other side. I'm very proud to introduce to you my daughter Jasmine. She wrote the title song of my latest CD on the other side and she's very active in the bridge ministry and helps lead worship right under the bridge. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you wrote the song and what was going through your heart and mind when you wrote that? Sure. I'd actually just met a group uh, called The Greens and I was really inspired by their music and so I went home to try to write a song that I thought maybe they would record and um, I was in my car driving one day and the lyrics just started popping into my head and I thought, you know, I, th I think that I could really make this something and I called my mom before the song was complete and I said, Mom, what do you think about this? And she said, I think that it could really be something great and, and gave me some ideas. When the song was finished, uh, we went to pitch it to the Greens and Mom said, you know, instead of pitching it to them, I think that I would like to sing it. And I said, well, if, if you want it, it's yours. And that's how she recorded it, and, and it became the title track, which I wasn't expecting, but I'm very grateful for it. Well, I would like to say also that Jasmine walked with me through that depression uh, in our home. She was uh, still in her adolescent years before she married, and she saw me go through the depression. There's a passage of scripture in Psalms 23 that says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. And if you will continue to walk through the valley, all of us walk through valleys, but if you walk through, don't stay there and camp out, but if you continue to take one step at a time and follow Jesus Christ as your Savior, there is a blessing on the other side. If you look at the children of Israel, they walk through the the, the desert. They walked through the wilderness, but there was a blessing on the other side, and that was called Canaan land. Yes. So can I encourage you today that if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, keep your eyes on Jesus and walk through. There is a blessing on the other side. This year we released a CD called On the Other Side, and we've also released a companion book to go with it, and it's called On the Other Side life-changing stories under the bridge and I am very happy for the opportunity to tell the story of the bridge ministry and what God did in my heart to change me to be able to even reach out to homeless people and to show the love of Jesus Christ to drug addicts and alcoholics and prostitutes and I'm also happy to tell their story of how God has changed their life. There's so many miracles that I have seen God do under the bridge. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 9 through 11 says that when you feed the poor and you take in those that are cast out, and that's a King James uh, version, cast out means homeless, cast out of their home. The Lord says that when you take care of the poor and those that are cast out, you'll say, Lord, and he will be so close to you then in the same sentence, the same verse, you don't wait for another chapter or another book, but in the same breath, you say, Lord, and instantly he'll say, I'm here. So what that tells me is that when you take care of the poor, the orphans, and the widows, and the homeless, God says, if you pray a prayer, I will answer it quickly. So I have seen God do so many miracles under the bridge. One day it was cold here in Nashville. It had turned cold just 
uh, plummeted about 40 degrees from morning to evening. The homeless were freezing. We happened to be under the bridge that night and they were asking me, I was handing out clothes, but it was short sleeve clothes for the heat and I had not prepared for the cold weather. That night I went home and I didn't rest at all. And I got up before daylight in the dark and I laid out on the floor and I cried out to God because my heart was broken for the homeless that I knew that night had been uh, searching for a place to sleep and warm. And I was tormented by thoughts of how my friends could have, could have found, found shelter and warmth that night and I had not helped. So my mind is thinking, I'll call pastors all across the country and maybe on Saturday or Sunday they can get up and announce to their congregation, if you have an old coat, would you bring it in and we'll send it to Candy Christmas in Nashville. That was what was in my mind. Or maybe I could take out a loan and buy several hundred coats for my friends, which, which was not God's will. God wanted to provide this. So I laid out on the floor and I cried and I prayed and I asked God for help. I got up from prayer, began to wipe the tears from my face, and my cell phone rang, and it was a friend of mine. I didn't even know he had any coat connection. I'd only gotten Pop-Tarts from him before for the homeless. But he called me on the phone, and I answered, hello. He said, you don't need any coats, do you? I said, what? Yes, I've just been praying for coats. How many do you have? He said, at least 300. Well, my first thought is, Okay, how much money is that going to cost? He said, no money at all. He said, I'll have them to you within two hours. That's how quickly God answers prayers. I have a whole book full of stories that I want to tell you of what God's done for the homeless and the bridge ministry here in Nashville, Tennessee. The book is a companion book to the new CD. They're both called On the Other Side. The book is On the Other Side, Life Changing Stories from Under the Bridge. And it can be bought on Amazon.com. Books a Million, Borders, Lifeway Christian, uh, Family Christian Bookstores, and the song titles from the CD are also chapter titles in the book. So that will explain to you why I chose these songs uh, for the CD on the other side. Kelly, would you share with us what to you means to be an active Christian? Or what does the word Christian mean to you? To be a Christian today, for me, it means to be Christ-like. And actually, that is the definition of the word Christian, is to be Christ-like. And we are to be God's hands and God's feet and God's heart. If Jesus Christ were walking the planet today, I think you would find him under a bridge or helping the poor. He said, I have been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. And I believe that if you look for the brokenhearted, and you look for the homeless, you look for the poor, to reach out your hand to them. I believe that's Christ-like. There is a, an, an, uh, a slogan that uh, a local tennis shoe maker says, just do it. And I believe that if you could hear Christ speak today, he would say, just do it. We think we need the opportune time to reach out. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And many times we think that we should buy a passport or a plane ticket and go to a third world country. But can I tell you, there are people in your community standing in the grocery store line next to you or playing with your children out on the playground that need the gospel of Jesus Christ and need the heart of someone who is Christ. -like. If you'd like to find out more about the Bridge Ministry and our work with the homeless and our orphanage in Port au Prince, Haiti, please go to bridgeministry.org. If you'd like to find out more about our book and upcoming CD and my tour schedule, go to candychristmas.com. I hope you will. Thank you so much for tuning in to Briefcast today. And I hope that something that we've said has touched your heart and motivated you in your own city to work with the poor and the homeless. God bless you. I hope you have an awesome day.